So welcome back to another episode. Today we're actually tackling some of the preparation that we need to put the clutch in. Now most people will probably just get uh, impatient, grab it, slam it in, and hope for the best, but there are some certain things that we need to double check and make sure before we go ahead with that. So right now I'm just making sure that this front face of the bell housing Get it? Bell housing. No. <laughs> but make sure that it's all flat with a block and piece of sandpaper. So after I do that, I'll hit the back side of the block here and make sure that's nice and clean as well. All right, so we got this all edge all nicely polished up there and then we got our scatter plate went through and chamfered all the holes because they were, had a little bit of a hang that you catch your fingernail on so I decided that needed to go so we'll just shove that guy up there Throw a bolt in there, hold that, and now we have to get ourselves our flywheel. So, it's time to tear apart the big old monster clutch. Alright, so, these things are very particular on how you take, put them on and off. So, we're just going to inspect a couple things here. Looks like they already have it marked for us. There's a dash on the piece there, two dashes here, and three dashes over here. So, we also have this big green stripe there to mark all of that. I think we should be go to just remove it. There's that guy. So we got one disc on that side. Now, So very nice for them to label which side is which. Trans side is there. Guessing these uh, clutch discs are zero balanced anyways. Oh, it's a GM friction. And there's the green marks, marking which ones go where. That's good.
All right, let's see. Well, lucky for them, they put all the holes in there correctly so you can't flip it upside down. I wrote trans side on it anyways. And then I marked this edge that lines up with this green spot. So that way I'm sure that this will get back in there properly. Oh, that's interesting. Vallejo friction there. Okay, well. That's a pretty interesting setup. It's like the other one is captured in this pressure plate section. So, that would tell me that you probably don't want to do your own clutch on these things. So, guess what we really needed was just this guy here. And we can just grab this guy and some bolts. and put this thing on our block. All right, so. On this side, we just get ourselves lined up. Okay, so that should hold it on there. It's not going to go anywhere. So now, we can throw our bell housing on. All right, so we got everything torqued down. Now we're going to attempt to get our dial indicator going. So let's go through with what we have here. So we had zero here, 0 0.0015 there, 0 002 here, 0 005 here, 0 006 and a half, and 0 005 there. So this entire bottom section is out a little bit. Since we're so small, I think I might pull the bell housing off and grind off some of the powder coat on the back of the set up there. All right, so I took down the paint off a little bit on these edges here. So maybe that might give us just maybe a thousandths. 
And then over that distance that we have there, we might have two thousandths, which would bring us into a decent margin of error. So, our flywheel is now flat, now we're just going to have to figure out <sighs> Alright, so next step, I'm going to have to pull the cover off the transmission and get a measure in here. Yay! Then, if I knew where my magnet was, I'd grab the ball out of there. But, as it is, we're just going to zip out our nuts here. Once we got the whole transmission out of there, we had enough leverage to smack it. Now we pull the front cover off. Alright, there's the roller detent piece. Put that over with the spring and all that good stuff. Just give her a couple spins this direction and make sure their adjustment to the bell housing is correct on this section. All right, we're maybe one thousandths off plane, so that's good. Now we need to switch. And do the inner readings here. All right, so multiple years worth of screwing around with this just to get it so it sits on here. And it looks like it will do. 
So, let's see, we got a notch and a notch there. So, let's just bring it straight up 90. Interesting. Let's go jump the It's one of those things where this really should be done by two people. Should be another ninety. So essentially what we got is, we got zero over there, four thousandths down here, twelve thousandths and nine thousandths. So that means it needs to go that way, six thousandths and that way four. Humbug. That means I'm going to have to order up some pins, some nice offset ones, and that also means I won't be done with this this week. That sucks. All right, so I got the new pins. They are longer than the old ones, which will be a little bit better. It'll stick through the bell housing a little more. And most importantly, we got the seven offset. It's like it's so minuscule. But our first spot is just removing the uh, old dowel pins. And that's pretty much just as easy as putting a punch in the hole and giving her a whack. All right, so I'm gonna make a guess that this is where we're gonna want it. Mm 
Right about there. All right, let's give this a go. So we got a one. We got six. And it's about eight, maybe. And we got screwed up. Well, looks like I've got to do runner again. Very little. So we are definitely within five thousandths. So I would consider this successful here. Oh, all right. Guess time to pull this faceplate off and get the transmission bolted back up. All right, so I guess next stop is installing our bearing here. Hopefully they'll fit well enough. Well, ain't that something. All right, so once I got the right socket to finish tapping that in, pulled out the flywheel bolts, put a little red Loctite on there. Last thing we want is this stuff going anywhere. So, you just need to zip these things down and hopefully torque it to spec.
so we are in, we are torped up. I think we're looking pretty good. Guess we can just throw the bell housing back on. So we got our lines here, I guess. This is our remote bleeder. So this way we can put this somewhere a little more accessible. So I don't have to run around underneath the vehicle trying to stick my hand up under somewhere. So we got that. This guy, probably gonna have to put an end on that so we can even just reach it. Well, this should be enough to probably slide it together and check our clearance in between the throwout and the rest of the clutch and see if we need to shim it or not. Yay! Alright, so a lot of struggling but I finally got it hooked up in there. Bolted on the uh, piece here for the I think that's something that just the F body has. Not 100% sure. We'll remove that once we get in the car and hook it up to our clutch but I think that's about it last thing I had to do is make sure well should have done this without this attached measure the clearance for the throwout bearing but what I did is took a piece of metal that was essentially at the uh, kind of worst case scenario width and try to put it in between the fingers and the throw up bearing and we look like we should be good. So lucky for us uh, they've got a wide range that you can use and because apparently the monster doesn't necessarily have as much uh, throw as what most other places need, so hopefully that all works out. I'm thinking we're looking pretty good here. Next stop is to clean up all this mess here so we can shove it back in. But that's for another day. Thanks for stopping by and yeah. We'll see you later.